Hey guys, how's it going? We're in the greenhouse and we are gonna be planting up a green stock vertical garden, possibly even two, depending on how it goes today. This is what it is, or one of the styles that green stock has. This feels like an absolute blast from the past because we have planted these up on video a couple of different times, but it's been a few years and they have some additions that I think are really super helpful. First of all, this is the original green stock vertical garden. This is the five tier right here. It has 30 planting pockets. That's pretty intense. And I feel like this is such a good option for people, especially who have limited space, where you need to think a little bit more vertically to fit in more things. So if you're gardening on a patio or if you simply wanna have it closer to your kitchen door because it makes it way more convenient to have if you're growing edibles. So you can grow flowers in these if you want, which I have done as well. Um, I love the color that they offer now. So I, and maybe they did in years past and I just didn't realize it, but I think they all they had a few years ago was tan and terracotta, uh, which we did tan, I think, at that time. I think they uh, call it beige. Or beige. Yeah, is that okay, the same well, thing? Kind of. Okay. <laughs> same family, right? This one is called evergreen, and I really like the color because, you know, we love plants and green, and I think it just really, it blends in really nicely, which I really love. Also, this. I think this is the biggest improvement in in my eyes. This is a way to automatically water. So you can set it up on a timer to your hose and it will automatically fill the water reservoir. I'll explain how the whole thing waters, how it all works, but you can set it up now to where you can kind of, I mean, you need to check on it and hopefully you are in harvesting whatever you have in there, uh, but it's a little bit more hands-off, which in our garden, that is huge. We have a lot of projects going on. We live in a dry, hot cl climate. A lot of you guys do as well. Maybe you just don't want the maintenance of having to think about it, you know? So today I've got a bunch of beautiful things, a mixture of all edibles. So we've got herbs, we've got some greens, I've got some violas, which are edible flowers. We've got garlic even. I mean, you can really do a whole lot of different things in this type of garden. Uh, I actually asked Aaron if he wanted to plant one of them up too, like a little bit of a challenge, but I think it might be fun to start plants in one and start seeds in the other. That's the thing, like it doesn't have to be a huge investment in plants in the uh, you know initial stage of planting it, you can start with seeds as well. In fact, I think they sent a packet of seeds. They're somewhere around here. Came with it. Hang on, got them. Couple of different types of greens. We've got the salad bowl blend lettuce and Bloomsdale spinach. And you guys, we are able to give one of these away. So this whole setup right here. Uh, so this is the original five tier with the automatic watering system, like this whole setup. Uh, to enter, you just comment below this video on YouTube and we will pick a winner in how, how long? Uh, maybe like a week. A week? Yeah, time. I'll it a week. Also, there is a coupon code, it's Garden Answer, and that will get you 25% off anything on their website from April 13th through the 17th, except for the automatic watering system right here, because this is already on a special pricing thing because it's only on pre-sale at this point. So that ends on the 17th. After that, the code will get you 10 bucks off an order over $75. So anyway, thanks Greenstock for sending these out and for working with us on that giveaway. Okay, if you haven't seen one of our original videos, which, you know, it's been a few years, so I'm guessing maybe you haven't. Uh, I wanted to run through how this works, like how they water. So you can see that each level looks the same. This is what the inside looks, and this is food grade plastic, so you're good to go planting your uh, edibles in it and all that. You can see at the bottom, there's a whole bunch of drain holes, which is really nice. There's this central kind of cone that comes up. And then this is the watering tray right here. I don't know the technical name, but it's where like water collects and is dispersed. So. This is what each level looks like. We've got the, you know, the planting reservoir and then you can see that gray tray right there on every single one of those levels. So what you do is you come along, you fill up this great big water reservoir at the top and there's a hole in the center. That hole puts water down through the entire green stock system and it disperses evenly through each one of the levels. And then once the water is in here, you know, you've got it on a level surface, I'm hoping. so the water should be leaking through these little holes or draining through these little holes to each one of your planting reservoirs. So uh, the watering, the internal watering system, even if you have it set up on the automatic watering system, it works the same because how the water, the automatic watering system works if you add this on. Also, if you have one of these already, you can get one of these separate and just add it to your current system. So how it works is you just, you can see the tube ends here. They sell like, I think four tubes come with it. 
um, you can uh, bring your hose over to it or take the tubes over to your hose, but it just clips to the sides here and then fills up your water reservoir and still waters the same internally. It's just that you've got it set up on a hose now that's on a timer and this is like the hose that's filling up your reservoir. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I muddy the waters a little bit with my explanations, but- It's basically the same. Either you fill it up with a hose or you let the you let automatic this. system right. fill it up with a- And you can hook four of these green stocks up together uh, on off of one hose. Uh, so we do have four. And we, I think we're gonna put it to the test and see how it does, especially once it hits you know, high heat. And what they recommend is that, especially for smaller crops like your greens, you run your drip for just one or two minutes. That's all it takes. And uh, see how it works. And then during the peak of the season, you wanna set your timer to go off twice a day for one or two minutes. That's not that much water. I don't know how much will flow out of a system in one to two minutes, but. Well, it's not dripping. It's not like a drip system. No, I mean, it's it'll like fill a hose. up like a regular hose. Yeah. That's not very much no. for one minute. Anyway, I feel like it's a pretty slick system. There's a whole bunch of different parts you can get to. I mean, the lid is separate. You can get that, which I think is nice. It kind of caps the whole system. It keeps junk from getting into the water reservoir. Uh, also, I mean, this one is on a spinny, you know, rotating base, which is quite nice. If you don't have it set up on the automatic water, you're free to move it all the way around. If you have, you know, a balcony situation where only one side's getting light, you know, every day you can go give it a quarter turn so that every side is getting equal amounts of light. Also, it catches the water. And I think they've got this in one and five foot lengths, right? Mm -hmm. So the water catches here, it drains through these holes, goes through the tube and you can shoot it off into a flower bed or something like that. So if you've got it on a deck and you wanna protect your surface, you can make it drain away, which I think is super, super handy. The catch with the automatic watering system, if you've got it set up on one, you can't really, they don't recommend that you rotate it, you know, cause you've got a, a solid line here. I feel like if you've got one hooked up to an automatic water system and your hose, you bring over a hose to it. And if you give it a little bit of flex, you could at least go 180, don't you think? Yeah. Just kind of like this, not all the way around. Cause you couldn't, in theory. In theory. <laughs> we haven't tested that. Yeah. Um, but if you've got multiple set up together, I think you've got to kind of just leave them sit. So we're actually going to plant this up here in the greenhouse because one, it gets light morning through evening uh, and we still have a couple of cold below freezing nights on the forecast that I wasn't expecting and I've got tender things that have been in the greenhouse. So uh, the fact that they come apart in levels means that we can either leave it in here or we could take off one level at a time and go move it somewhere outside where we would like it and leave it for the season. So right here you can see this is the a Bluetooth hose timer. So you, you know, put this on your faucet, your hose goes off of this and then goes to the automatic water tube down here. Uh, and then this is the automatic watering system right here, minus the tubes, which are chilling right there on the box. <laughs> I'm a little bit scattered this morning. And then you can also get a wheel kit right here if you wanna be able to wheel it around on your deck. There's all kinds of different things. There's like plant supports and there's also uh, cloth covers, which I think that, they weren't did they offer those i don't know but ago? it is a good idea yeah it's just like a big old giant pillowcase you can put over the whole thing fits really nicely so anyway i think what i'd like to do is just start planting this up and i'm just going to do a mix of stuff yeah i've got strawberries greens violas broccoli garlic a bunch of goodies which one am i planting this one yeah okay you sure you don't want to do a challenge here <laughs> no I, i'm i'm good behind the camera are you yeah <laughs> are you sure I think everybody likes to see a good challenge, Erin. Got our potting soil right here. And I forgot how many it actually takes to fill these. I'm going to say I'm going to use a whole bag at least on this per level. This is a one cubic foot bag. There, it says uh, fill soil to top on every single one of these. It's going to take just a little bit more of one bag. I'm just going to kind of lightly press it in. I don't want any air pockets in there. Uh-oh, the whole bunch just come out the front. No, you're good. That's pretty close to top. I've got some root balls to deal with here. Yeah, maybe that's if you're doing seeds. Maybe, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I can remove some. Okay, so we're gonna plant now. Let's start with the strawberry. And these are the seascape variety, which is my, right? That's one I picked up, right? <laughs> My favorite favorite strawberry i have ever ever grown in fact i ordered three more flats to plant out in our big garden this year big beautiful berries all season i might leave 
well, maybe on a different one. So you can do, I mean, all kinds of different things. I was thinking about all of the different types of miniature tomatoes that are available. Now you could do like little cherry tomatoes that come out the side. You could do peppers, you could do beans from seed. You do all kinds of fun stuff. Okay, let's do a Dotwell's French thyme. This one grows six to 12 inches tall and wide, which is a great size for this. You know, the only things I'm trying to think that you probably wouldn't want to plant in here are kind of like, I would think kind of obvious, like pumpkins and corn. Corn. <laughs> corn and uh, indeterminate tomatoes that get massive. You could do flowers in here, but nothing that gets too huge. We've got a cilantro here. I'm gonna plant this one closer to me so I can put some color in between. Gotta have a little color, some edible flowers. Nasturtiums would be really pretty in a planter like this. This is a sorbet pink wing viola that needs a drink. Haven't watered in here yet today. Do you have enough plants for all the oh, Aaron. pockets? <laughs> you have little faith? We're good. Also, I think we're good. <laughs> okay, let's do giant flowered chives. That doesn't mean the plant gets giant. They just have giant flowers. 10 to 12 inches tall is all on that one. It smells so good. Mm. All the different textures are pretty. Okay, now I'm gonna go in on this side. Always thinking a little bit about color as well. These are lettuce starts. So I'm not gonna plant probably just two, oops, two of these little cells. This is Roseanne lettuce. See, these will stretch here and I'm not gonna plant the whole four pack in here. These plants will get big enough on their own. That'll provide a little bit of different color over on this side. It's gonna be such a slow, gentle water that I'm not worried about leaving any kind of a lip uh, for watering. You know how when you plant other containers, you wanna leave a good lip so that you can get a good amount of water in there. This is gonna be such a gentle, gentle stream. It'll have time to soak in. Okay, that level's done. And make sure that this is somewhat cleaned out. And we're gonna just, oh boy. Okay, leave a little space for this. <laughs> Well, it says soil to top on the, the sides there. Maybe it means you need to taper it toward the middle. Maybe. I need to have a taper warning. Okay. There, the holes that are in here, I don't think it'll probably matter, but I like to line a hole up with a reservoir. It just makes me feel better. But again, I think it's such a slow, gentle stream that the roots are gonna get water no matter which direction they're pointing. That looks great. Okay. This goes on the bottom. Nice. Okay, I think at this point, we'll set up a camera and just kind of speed up the planting process, but I'll give you a tour in the end of each of the other levels. I think I'm gonna change my method here. It was a little bit difficult to get that second layer on because they get, they get a little bit heavy, you know, when they're full of soil and you're trying really hard not to damage any of the plants right below. So what I'm gonna do is put this one empty on top and just plant it in place. I think the only concern, and maybe it's not a concern, but it does not get any soil down through here so it doesn't get into a water reservoir. So I'll just put a little piece of paper over the top and fill it with soil, plant, and then remove the paper. I think that would work just as good. I got them both finished, so this one's full of plants. So you can kind of see a little bit of a, not an after per se, but this one's full of seeds and it will quickly look like this right here, especially in this greenhouse where, it, you know, when it gets sunny out, it gets warm in here and things just explode. Uh, let's do a little tour of the rest of the things that I put in here. I basically just did a bunch of repeat plants. Um, so in the second level, I've got broccoli, red lettuce, a Burgarten sage, garlic, 
There's a strawberry right there and a viola. Next level is strawberry, viola, garlic, red lettuce, broccoli, and a trailing rosemary. I start, did I start with stra strawberry? <laughs> Next level, garlic, broccoli. There's a uh, Dotwell's thyme. Then we've got another strawberry, violas, red lettuce. Top layer, I ran out of violas, so it's just a repeat of everything except for the viola. I think it looks really pretty. I'm really excited about it. And then on this one, I did one level for each type of plant that I put in. So top level is salad bowl lettuce. The Bloomsdale spinach is this one. Then we've got Nanty's carrots, which this is really nice because the original green stalks have 10 inch root reservoirs. There are uh, leaf models, they're called leaf, and they're only seven inches, which will allow you to stack them a lot higher. I think, what, seven tiers instead of five? Um, but when you have a 10 inch one, you can do some root crops like carrots. Uh, Nanties don't get tremendously huge, so I think that'll be perfect. And then we've got cherry bell radishes in this one. And then we've got the baby pixie cabbage. So just tiny little cabbage heads that will form in these, hopefully, in this bottom layer. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna show you how to set up the water system. And I'm only gonna set one up today because I kinda wanna do, well, first off, I wanna do a side-by-side -side comparison just to see how long it takes the reservoir to fill up, like how much time I spend on this one versus on that one. But I think it's important when we're starting seeds, especially when some of these are surface sown, like the lettuce, to water them from overhead. I don't know if the water will wick all the way over on the top layer of soil, uh, good enough to get that well enough, good enough to get that soil saturated, keep those seeds wet enough to germinate. So I'm gonna leave this one just as is. I will probably water through the reservoir, but I'll also make sure that the tops stay well watered. I mean, we're starting tons of stuff in here right now. I'm in here every single day, you know, tending to seedlings and such. So that's gonna be no problem whatsoever, but we'll set this other one up on the automatic water. Rustle down. Okay, so these are the clips for each one of the levels. This is the T if you are wanting to put more than one of them together. <laughs> Russell. <laughs> uh, and then this is what, let's see, maybe I should do some reading here. <laughs> Aaron set this one up, so I didn't, I was not involved in that, so this is the first for me. So we're going to do the clips here. So it looks like you just put the clips on like that. Not super difficult. You want to kind of line them up here. Whoops. There we go. Step one, check. I, I think I said that they come with four tubes. They actually come with two tubes. We just have two green stalks here. So we have four tubes collectively. So two tubes per garden. Okay, these work a lot like drip tape. You make sure that that's all the way up to the valve. Russell, my goodness. We're gonna push this on. Okay, and then you just, to clamp it, screw that piece onto the tube. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna go anywhere. Okay, so this next part is the part that will go into the reservoir. The water will come out of this area, done. And then we're putting on this half inch to three quarter inch hose thread connector, adapter. Is that it? Yeah. Woo, okay. There are two extra clips in the system because if you happen to have the leaf system that has seven tiers, you have the proper amount of clips. And then of course, you know, this is the T. I think I already mentioned that, you know, once you come down, well, I'll ex explain in a second. I'm so visual. Let me set it up. Okay. And then, like I said, the other two parts that are in here, this is a T connector if you're connecting multiples. Uh, and then there's an elbow as well if you're connecting a third one. So you've got everything you need there. Okay, let's get a hose over here. I think Aaron was working on setting this up. So this is already hooked up to the hose. Uh, we've got a T splitter because this is my regular greenhouse hose. I still wanna be able to use that every day. And then this one goes to our wireless uh, timer. Okay. You know, I'm gonna do this. There. I'll probably go get a rake and scoot the gravel out since we're gonna have this set up. 
for the summer. I'll get a rake and scoot the gravel and bury the hose so we don't have to worry about stepping over it all the time. But it's really nice to see that that one is all set up. But let's try the rotation real quick with the hose. So if you've got, you know, kind of a loose hose, I think you've got a little play. So if you have to face it a little bit more toward the light, you can do that. But then, you know, if you've got multiples connected together, you're not going to have that kind of flexibility, I don't think. Aaron is going to turn on the system from his phone. Do I need to download the app? Yeah, there is an app. It's called um, Dig BTT. Okay. Can you see that? Yep, BT controller. Yeah. Okay, so it says it's off. Connected. And then do I press that? I don't, maybe you can't start it. Just make it go. You might have to do an actual program. Oh, manual run. Oh. Let's do... Try one minute. one minute, yeah. Press. Oh! Whoa! Oh, oh my oh, goodness! Oh, oh, oh. You gotta have the lid on. Oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> oh, we gotta neck that pressure down a bit. Yeah. Well, that garlic that? is well watered. <laughs> yeah, it's not shooting out anymore. That's better. Yeah. Oh, that's handy. So they do have the little valve, you guys. The pressure on our hose was just too great. <laughs> and it was shooting straight out the front. We're having a little flood going on. Yeah, that works. That's better. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, the air in the line, it still hasn't gotten completely clear. We just turned our water on. To yesterday? Yesterday. Yesterday. So yeah, there's still some air in the line. So it probably doesn't make sense to buy a lid because these are separate if you're going to be watering it manually uh, because you'd have to take it off every day. And once your plants get some size, it gets increasingly difficult to put it on when the leaves, you know, flop over the edge. And in here, I don't think we have a chance of stuff really getting into it and like plugging it up at all. It's probably not 100% level. We'll see real fast. So when we've got seed right here at the surface level, I just feel like it's safer for me to do one of these. Sure. Until the seed germinates at least. Easy enough. Yep, looks great. So that's it, you guys. We've got two of them set up. Uh, we've got two more yet to set up, but I'm gonna wait until next month when uh, tomatoes and peppers, you know, I can get my hands on some of those miniature varieties. I think that'll be really fun. I wanna toss some basil into one of them, uh, but it'll just be fun to see the progression. And like I said, they may or may not end up staying in here. I do feel like it's a good spot for them because there's no wind. You know, they're protected from, or we get some pretty fierce winds through the summer months uh, and they do get a lot of light and plenty of heat in here. So they should be really happy. And I'm just very excited about this automatic water system. I feel like that's such an amazing addition to something like this because you know it's really I think beneficial in so many ways but having that automation really kind of takes it over the top for me because that's so important to us in our own garden. So I'll most likely end up putting them both actually all four of them on the water system uh, once you know these grow up and have some roots to you know, soak up deeper water in each one of those uh, wells. So anyway, again, don't forget to enter the giveaway. To do that, you leave a comment, just any nice comment below this video on YouTube, and we will pick a winner in about a week. Thanks again, Greenstock, for sending these out for us to try. Super excited. You know, we've uh, had a relationship with Greenstock since, for, oh, I don't know. Like 2015. Yeah, they've been uh, a part of like our community for a long time. They've been following what we do and we've been really excited to see the new development. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll show you progression through the season and we'll probably show you when we set up the next two and plant those as well. So anyway, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye.